All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Math Puzzle Crash Course. We've got a uh, an equation here. Uh, it actually is an equation. Um, this has an equal sign. I know it has a question mark on the end, but this could be looked at just the same way as saying equals a equals x equals y. Um, sometimes there's a lot of disagreements. People will say, oh, that's an expression. Um, I don't see a variable in there, but um, this question mark could be a um, a variable, so um, I don't want to get off topic too much here, but um, it is something that comes up quite a bit in a lot of arguments and debates um, on the subject. Um, equations are pretty simple. They're um, simply showing the equality between two expressions, um, and you could consider this question mark an expression. It's not really defined. It's to be treated like a variable. Uh, but again, <clears throat> this problem has a combination of uh, subtraction, multiplication, and addition. Um, I've seen um, a lot of incorrect answers on this, but it's a pretty simple problem. Uh, you may already know the answer. Uh, and I've got that in your head, but um, if you'd like to, you can pause the video, and we'll come back and we'll work through this one uh, and, and discuss a few topics uh, related to order of operations. Uh, and maybe a couple of areas of confusion. But um, again, you can pause that and we'll come right back and take a look at this together. All right, uh, let me get my pointer going here just in case I need it. But um, anyhow, if you recall, there's a thing called the order of operations, which is something that has its roots all the way back to the 16th century. Uh, it's something that's been taught through school, uh, North America, elementary school. Um, I don't recall in the UK what, what they call their school systems there um, or their levels of education. They have like O level and different levels, but it would basically be, I think it's primary school, I believe is what it would, would be called, which would be the earlier education. Um, and you've got um, the order of operations, it basically consists of four steps. Um, today, there's there's a number of different acronyms that are used. They're kind of like memorization tools. Now, those haven't always existed, uh, and some people are, are a little confused over the order of operations because they think, well, I never learned PEMDAS or BIDMAS or BODMAS, uh, so that must all be new. Well, the acronyms being used as a memorization tool are a lot newer. Um, they're still probably decades old, but... Um, the actual order of operations itself um, goes back a very long way. I mean, all the way back to like sometime in the 16th century um, in some of the earliest books uh, on algebra, it's, it was listed in there. It just kind of came out from that. Um, but depending on where you're from, um, in, in a lot of English-speaking countries, you'll either see like Bodmus or Bidmus or Pemdas. Um, they really all explain the exact same order of operations. Um, it, it, with BODMAS, um, you have brackets, um, then orders, um, division and multiplication, and addition and subtraction. That's what the D and the M represent, division and multiplication, the A and the S, addition and subtraction. Um, the thing to remember is that division and multiplication have equal precedence. Division is the same thing as multiplying by a reciprocal. So you just solve multiplication and division left to right. So when you see BODMAS and then you see PEMDAS, you know, don't think that those are giving you different answers because, well, one's tr you think one's trying to tell you D before M or M before D. Um, that doesn't matter. Uh, that I know there's six letters in these acronyms, but there's still only four steps. Um, and the big thing to remember is, as far as operations, mathematical operations, there's really only three three steps involved, and that would be your orders, um, your multiplication and division, and then your addition and subtraction. Now, um, BODMAS, I, I kind of like that one a little bit better because orders is a more general term uh, because you do have things like factorials where you have like, um, you know, five to the third power, which is, you know, the same thing as five times five times five. Well, you know, 
well, I'm sorry, that's exponents. I've got that turned around. Now, a factorial would be like where you have, uh, you know, a five and an exclamation mark after it. And uh, the, the, the factorial would, it represents five times four times three times two times one. So it's basically you're multiplying uh, by, and the next number is either in descending order. So that would be a factorial. So factorials and then exponents, which I incorrectly called factorials, you know, an exponent would be like five to the third power, where you have five times five times five. Again, these are just um, uh, shorthand methods of writing repeated multiplication. You know, it's much easier to write five to the third power than it is to write five times five times five. And you can imagine something like five to the 100th power, right? You, do you want to write out five times five times five times five? You want to write that out 100 times, or would you rather write five to the 100th power? So you think of things like factorials, um, exponents, and even square roots. Square roots fit into orders as well. You know, those these are all just basically... Uh, shorthand methods of writing uh, repeated multiplication. So they have priority over um, just simple division and multiplication. Uh, and then your division and multiplication, they have equal precedence. You just solve left to right, your addition and subtraction left to right. So, uh, and then, you know, BIDMAS, there's different different countries, they'll, they'll refer to orders as indices. It's really all the same thing. Um, uh, in North America and the United States, I believe Canada maybe too, uh, they they'll they'll use PEMDAS a lot, uh, and the E just represents exponents, um, which is not really fully descriptive. Exponents is just one part of it. You still have square roots, you still have factorials, so this exponents description isn't really. I don't look at that as being as good as saying orders or or maybe indices, where those are more general terms covering everything. Uh, the PEMDAS still covers ex, um, factorials and and um, square roots. There's nothing different. It's just I don't necessarily like the term here as much. Um, but anyhow, getting getting beyond that, when we look at this problem, we've we know that multiplication is going to be the first priority in this problem. Um, so we do the multiplication first. Uh, and you got to keep in mind the negative sign. So it's 10 minus 100 plus 10. So you get 10 minus 100. 10 minus 100 is negative 90. Uh, so negative 90 plus 10 is negative 80. Um, and you can also remember that since we said that multiplication is shorthand for repeated addition, you could take this 10 times 10 and basically subtract 10 10 times you know you could have 10 minus 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 10 and then finally plus 10 and you're still going to get negative 80 as your answer so just remember that um you can replace the multiplication with the equivalent addition and uh, you're going to get the same answer uh, and then the answer is negative 80. Um, so this, you know, this relationship between multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction is nothing new. It's always existed. Um, that's why sometimes you'll have people that say, well, I was just taught to go left to right, you know, back in my day, which which is incorrect. A lot of people, there's a lot of people that don't remember or possibly didn't pay attention uh, back in the day. And, um, Sometimes they get confused over what they were actually taught because I, I don't really believe their teachers would have been that incompetent to teach left to right, especially when no textbooks existed that ever did that. Um, you just remember again, I, I know we've covered this already, negative 80 is the answer. Uh, Nobody was taught to blindly solve left to right. And uh, parentheses are just grouping symbols and they're not needed here. You know, a lot of people say, well, since there's no parentheses or there's no brackets, you just go left to right. Well, that's not true because in the order of operations, the parentheses is just one step. It's They're just grouping symbols. And all they do is they tell you to prioritize, prioritize what's ever inside of those parentheses. But it doesn't take away from the fact that your exponents, factorial, square roots still have priority. 
and then it doesn't take away from the fact that your multiplication and division would have priority over addition and subtraction. You know, and again, uh, I'll repeat this again, uh, multiplication is shorthand for repeated addition. Division is the same thing as multiplying by a reciprocal. So that's why your multiplication and division have equal precedence. Uh, and then subtraction is the same thing as the addition of a negative number. So that's why addition and subtraction also have equal precedence. You know, you just normally go left to right, solve those. With, with addition and subtraction, it doesn't even matter the order, as long as you're keeping the signs straight on the numbers. Um, you're fine. Um, again, there's a little confusion sometimes over calculators. You'll have things here where you've got, um, on, on, a, on a computer, you have a scientific mode and a standard mode. And generally, your calculator will be in a standard mode. And in standard mode, these, and it's not explained, and I, I think it's kind of bad of Microsoft to do it this way, really. Um, and I don't know why they've done it this way for years. But the standard mode calculator uses what's called immediate execution mode. And it's the same thing as if you would take the scientific calculator and hit the equal sign after every mathematical operation, which is not the way you do it. Um, it's If you, you had this in standard mode, you'd be going 10 minus 10, hitting the equal sign, multiplying by 10, hitting the equal sign, adding 10, hitting the equal sign. You'll get an answer of something like 10 if this is in standard mode. But if you click on this menu, which I think they call this a hamburger menu, <laughs> which is kind of silly. It looks like a bun with a burger or a patty in between. Uh, you can switch it to scientific mode. And all that does is it means that it will work and solve multiple operations. And you'll get negative 80, which is the correct answer. Um, it doesn't mean that your calculator like is telling you the right thing if you get something else. It means that your calculator uh, is, is just a simple calculator that's only capable of handling one operation at a time. Um, and it used to be that that's the way all calculators worked and you just had to know the order of operations and you had to remember, oh yes, I gotta do the multiplication first and then and then work from there or use your memory functions. You, know, you, have, you have these memory store and recall functions. Uh, you, you, I think they, these M, S, M, R, and so on, people knew how to use those, which today they don't. Uh, a lot of people don't know how to use those. But uh, again, uh, if you're using a calculator and you get something other than negative 80, it just means that your calculator does not process multiple operations uh, in the same equation. Okay, and, and then here you've got a book. This book comes out from 1913. It was called First Year Algebra. I believe it was like William Hart. I can't remember who all the authors were for that book. But um, the fundamental operations are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Indicated operations are to be for, performed in the following order. First, all multiplications and divisions in their order from left to right. Then all additions and subtractions from left to right. So this book comes back to us from 1913. Uh, also hear the argument, well... You're showing me an algebra book. I never took algebra, or this is only for algebra, uh, which is which is ridiculous. It's not just for algebra. It doesn't matter if an equation is algebraic or not. It doesn't matter if there's a variable uh, in the expression or equation or not. If it's algebraic or not algebraic, you still follow the order of operations. So that's not your ticket. That's not your golden ticket. If you want to make the argument that that it only applies to algebra. And I've seen that argument made hundreds of times uh, by people who don't know how to do this properly, uh, and yet they fall back on that as, as their reason. And uh, I'll just let you know right now, that's not a good reason at all. And the next book helps show you that too. This is a mathematics textbook, teacher's edition from the 1950s, uh, that shows symbols and sets, order of operations. Uh, and here there's a note up here. We use this convention to simplify expressions because students will encounter it elsewhere. And that says CTM page 8. So these are somebody's notes that they had. Uh, and then it says colors used for teaching emphasis in this book. Well, these are not algebraic expressions. 5 plus 3 times 2 means, 
And look what it says, means 5 plus, and then they have the 3 times 2 in parentheses or brackets, whatever you like to call them, equals 5 plus 6 equals 11. Now, they're showing the parentheses on this side just for clarity. They're not needed. This is the same as this. But they're showing you how this is solved. And they're showing you that the priority is multiplication and your division. Uh, and so that this is from the 1950s. So I know a lot of people will say, well, back in my day, it was all left to right. No, it wasn't. Uh, the, the no book was ever written. If you if you show me the book, you know, I've been offering lots of money to that person who could show me a legitimate textbook because they don't exist. My money's my money's been safe for years when I make that bet. Uh, but here this note in a numerical expression containing a series of numerals connected by symbols of operation, you agree to this to the following to follow this order. You simplify the expression within each symbol of inclusion. Then you perform the multiplication and divisions in order from left to right. Finally, do the additions and subtractions in order from left to right. And then they have these exercises here. So this is nothing new. You know, I've just shown you a book from 1913. I've shown you this book from the 1950s. And I'm sure there'll, there'll still be people that will send a link to a Quora post that says, well... Uh, it, you know, Bodmus wasn't introduced into the national curriculum until 1988. Well, there's there's issues where, you know, people like to believe everything they see on the Internet and they don't realize that Quora is somebody's random post about, um, you know, a topic that they don't understand. It's, it wasn't introduced in 1988. You know, Bodmus comes way before that. The order of operations comes way before that. That was somebody posting on Quora. That is not a mathematics reference. Um, there's another video I've actually got discussing that. And uh, so, yeah, it's just, you know, people have to people have to understand and get things from credible sources. Uh, you can't just say, well, I Googled this and this is what it tells me. Well, what what's the source that's being shown to you? Is it from the Khan Academy? Is it something legitimate? Is it something credible? I mean, there are credible sources, but you have to look at to where that where that points to. If it's pointing to some random thing on Reddit, you can't trust it. So uh, anyhow, that's enough in this video. I hope this has been helpful, and we'll see you all in the next one.